Sandy Monroe is going to be here once again to tell us why vehicle to home and vehicle to load are the technologies that we can expect from our electric trucks and some cars to usher us into the future. And we're going to start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, so first let's clarify these terms really quick. The vehicle to home is where your electric vehicle, most likely a truck, can serve as a huge home battery and can power your home or at least parts of it in case of a power outage. And vehicle to load is essentially when your electric car can power really almost anything that can be plugged into an outlet on a one by one basis. But before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Evolve Auto, where you can find the lowest price extended warranty for your Tesla in the US. It's half the cost of the competitors and has zero deductible. Get a quote and a discount using the link in the description of this video. All right, Sandy, let's talk about a technology that I don't quite understand and no better person than you to explain stuff to me in the lamest terms. So uh, let's talk about vehicle to home in vehicle to load technology, right? So just, mm -hmm. you know, powering up your home with your car or electric car uh, and powering your other devices, including construction side, which I get. Um, and, and obviously you love F-150 Lightning. They, they have yes. that capability. Uh, tell us a little bit just what it is, right? What, what this technology is and why did it take so long for it to actually come out? Sounds pretty simple to me. Well, it's not really quite, uh, basically it's not a simple process to, um, to power your home via, um, via the battery pack inside of your vehicle. Um, some people are making it work, jury rigging it, and, um, and they're using old uh, Leaf uh, products and old um, uh, BMW i3s. And the reason that you do that, or the reason that you have like a $10,000 uh, BMW i3 sitting in your backyard is because you can take if you if you jury it around if you're if you're an electrician you can take the uh, energy out of that battery and power your home during any number of different types of storms so uh, lightning strikes uh, knocks out a transformer and uh, all of a sudden you're in the dark that means that your refrigerator is going to turn uh, all the food inside into garbage shortly and it means that you're gonna be out of pocket to replace whatever is in the refrigerator. If it's, it could be worse than that, you could, um, could get into a situation where it's really hot outside and all of a sudden you'd really like to have an air conditioner. It could be that, um, uh, quite frankly, your furnace goes out because no electricity means uh, nothing works. Now, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I have a solar system at my house and I have three Tesla walls in my basement. And so far uh, we've had uh, two times when we used it. One time it gave us a day and a half of, uh, of power until the, uh, the locals uh, got the power back up and running. And, uh, and a cheaper way to make that happen, and that's like utilizing the battery packs that are in the house. But there's a cheaper way of doing it and that is to buy an old BMW i3 talk to an electrician, or you have to be an electrical engineer and get him to figure out how he can charge up that battery using the grid and then leave it sit there. And then when you have a problem, you, uh, you flip a switch and the battery power is now gonna power your house for critical areas, refrigerators, um, heat pumps or or maybe the uh, or maybe the furnace or maybe the AC system if you need it. But those things that you really and truly need, you could have powered up. Now that's that's fine, but you could also go and buy something a little more expensive, like a uh, eighty-five thousand dollar or seventy-five thousand dollar Lightning. Now you you buy that F one fifty and you pull it up and it's next to your house and it's charged up and ready to go. Now you're going to see a whole lot more capacity. That truck has um, a fairly large battery. I can't remember off the top of my head, 
but it has a very large battery over, I think it's around 100 kilowatt hours, something like that. A little bit over that, yeah. Yeah, so that now is, uh, is your power source. Having, a, having a, a product like that is absolutely brilliant. So I don't have it because I don't need it. I got, I got batteries in the basement. But at the end of the day, if you don't have that, you have a, a vehicle that you can tool around in, and then you got something where there's an emergency, you can power your house. Now that's good, but you know it's better. If you're a construction guy, this is the ultimate, the ultimate best way to, uh, to, to run a construction site because you have tons of outlets. I can't remember how many duplex plugs, like, uh, you know, 110 duplex, but there's a shitload of them. They're in the, they're in the, uh, they're in the bed. They're in the, uh, in the, uh, what do you call it? The frunk. They're all over the place. Not only that, this thing lights up. It can light up a job site. Holy mackerel. It's built into the car or built into the truck. I can light up a job site. What does that mean? Okay, so if you're a new, new construction, if you're in green construction, okay, so you got a greenfield site, guess how much electricity you have? Zero. What do you got to do then? You got to bring a great big giant stinky generator along with you. And believe me, I've done this. And how many duplex, you get two duplex boxes. That means that I can plug in four electric things. And that is not nearly enough. With this, with the, with, the, uh, with the lightning, I've got a 220 plug. If I need it, I could weld something. There's a compressor built in. I mean, uh, I mean, Ford, I almost called them Chrysler, but Ford killed the market with this thing. I mean, anybody that's got a brain and is in real construction, it's the only truck to buy. It, it, it's just phenomenally good for, for that type of work. And I did that type of work when I was young. And I'm telling you what, dragging along an air compressor, dragging along a generator, dragging, and then people have got to, I mean, you can't do any, I could, I could make coffee, I plug it in, I make my own coffee. This is a brilliant idea. Uh, uh, I mean, Ford really knew what they were doing when they, when they cranked out the lightning. We, we should also mention that, you know, that many other cars have it. Ionic 5 has it, Silverado will have it, Rivian has it. Um, you know, do they light up a job site? No. Yeah, no, 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 they do actually. But so the technology, so my question is this, because like everyone's kind of doing it now in the last year, but what took so long? Is this technology, like, I mean, we had electric cars even 10 years ago, right? This year actually. So um, why, why it took this technology longer than, you know, self-driving features and, you know, everything else, everything, every other toy that we had, was there, was there some, you know, um, Hill to Mystery. get over with that technology? I just think that, uh, I think that marketing focused their attentions on ICE vehicles. And that's what their job was, right? Uh, which things were selling and they focused their attentions on that. So engineering can't do anything unless they get some kind of a direction from the marketing department. And um, when, I was, uh, when, I, when I worked for Ford, I used to call them shrimp eaters. They basically drank champagne, ate shrimp, and came up with good ideas that were useless. That's kind of like the way I look at marketing. I'm, I'm not a really smart guy. They don't watch technology train, trends. They don't, they don't like to get too dirty and stuff like that. Like They don't go into factories, and I doubt very much if they've been on many job sites. But then, um, I mean, you got, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Jim Farley, Jim Farley comes along, right? And he's moving on up and he gets into marketing. Why do you think they pick the F-150 versus something like the Hummer? Why do you think that would be? That's because Jim Farley, even though he was the VP of marketing, went out and started looking at stuff. I think, I think that Ford made a genius move, moving him up to president and CEO because this is a guy that truly can lead, number one. That's the number one thing in my, uh, in my hit parade for the five things you need in order to stay alive in, in the business uh, from an engineering standpoint. But number one, you have to have a leader that knows what the hell's going on and will lead instead of just manage. So he is coming in now and he's saying, and he said, you know what, we need a product that'll fill this bill. And he directed the engineering department 
to, uh, or him or somebody like him, directed the engineering department to say, create me an F-150. We were first with an aluminum uh, uh, pickup truck. I want to be the first with, with a truck that the, uh, the construction guys are going are gonna to swoon over. And look at the sales. Holy doodle. I, I, I can tell you right now that um, everybody I know that's in construction is going to get one, at least one or two. You probably mean reservations. Uh, they're over. Yeah, they start, reservations. Stop taking yeah. reservations at 200,000 because it's, it's, yeah. it's too much. Um, all right. Well, do you think, okay, so it, it, we probably shouldn't, I mean, obviously credit to, you know, Ford of, you know, doing this, but at the same time, you know, Rivian, when they unveiled their truck a couple of years earlier, already had that going. Do you think Rivian uh, and maybe a few other brands that were, you know, going to put that into their um, trucks and vehicles kind of had something to do with mm. Ford saying, hey, listen, we should, we, we better, you know, look into this technology. I mean, there's got to be some credit due there as well. Well, okay. So number one, um, I should tell you, I am getting a Rivian. Okay, so I am kind of partial, uh, and I am going to st speak from a biased standpoint. Which is fine. I got my I got my Jeep, four um, E, four by E, <clears throat> four by E, four times E. I don't care what it is. My wife doesn't like it. It dances. It's uh, very light in the front, and I don't, I don't care for it. When the Rivian came up with Corey's name on it, because we ordered one very early on, uh, I said, Corey, guess what? I own a place, and, and, and you're my president, but I want that car. And so our, four, our, our Rivian is coming, or my Rivian, is coming in shortly, and I'm cheerfully going to lay down the seventy-two or seventy-five thousand dollars, and I'm going to sell my Jeep. Okay, then that's that. I wanted it to be electric. The best I could do was the uh, was the the Jeep, and I got it. But I am definitely going for the Rivian, and why? Ah, because it will power my house if I need to, and it will light up my backyard if I wanted to. This is a pretty. This is the perfect party vehicle. Well, I, I hate do to not. I hate to disappoint you. I, I don't think Rivian can power your house. It can po power your, like, you know, uh, appliances, but I don't think it can power your house. I mean, I'm sure they'll develop that. But for now, I think it's just... I'm not 100% sure, but I think I think I can swing um, at least uh, 110 into the house. I may not be able to get yes. 220. I don't know about that, but 110. So what does that do? That gives my furnace... A, I don't even need that. What I really needed was a party vehicle. And this is the party vehicle. I'm telling you what, I'm extremely excited about this. I can park this in my new backyard. I live in a country now. I can park it in the backyard. I can illuminate a whole bunch of areas. I can, I can, run, uh, I can run my power all over the place. And not only that, I love driving the thing. It's a fantastic vehicle. So I want something that does dual purpose. When I train people, when I train people on how to design product, I say every part, every part, if it's going to be a good part, has to have three functions. So with my Tesla 3, well, it's not mine, but the company's Tesla 3, what can I do? I can drive to work and back. What else? That's it. Can I power my house? No. Can I power anything? Uh, you know, something maybe inside the vehicle, but... I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm not going to be taking that to a construction site. I am hoping that uh, the other car I've got, the other truck I've got on 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 order, which is the Cybertruck. I'm hoping that they're going to take a cue from Ford Motor Company and power my house and power everything I want powered uh, via via 110 or 120, whatever. Some people get excited when I say 110, but at the end of the day. I want to know whether I'm going to be able to power other things. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it. Pretty sure the battery is going to eclipse anything that the uh, that the Rivian is going to be able to park out, or even the uh, the Lightning. But right now, there's not enough data, so I can't I can't really say that. But I will tell you that to me, the Rivian Rivian is. Uh, they made a little boo boo there with uh, saying that they're going to jack the prices up, but. 
I saw that uh, RJ did go back and say, oh, uh, there was a mistake. <laughs> right. Don't cancel. Right. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, that's the fastest way to get people to leave. Just tell them they're going to pay more. Uh, but but I'm extremely excited about my Rivian. I'm looking forward to getting it. And I uh, and uh, I. I, I'm not sure that I'm ready to say this, but I, I think that this may be something that would be equally as good as, uh, as certainly uh, a Model 3, maybe as good as a Model Y. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty bullish on, on, on Rivian right now. After driving it around and trying it out, and, and in essence, we did uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, study work on the, on the vehicle itself in person. Uh, for uh, for an investment company, so uh, we knew a lot about it before it. That's why we bought early. Well, as always, don't forget to subscribe to Sandy's channel. I put a link to it in the description of this video. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time, and remember to stay charged. Take it